Hey everybody, what's going on? Dace here, and today we are taking a look at one of my clears in Gray's Counter GM on Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's day one, or at least the uh, time of this recording, it's uh, my first day playing the game. So far I have done Standard Original, Standard Hard, and Standard Extreme, which I just finished um, playing. Um, I was originally going to do a commentary for Original, but I figured, you know what, if I'm going to do commentaries for hard and then extreme when I do that. Uh, I might as well just save original for maybe like a guide video project if anyone is in need of that kind of uh, thing instead of just having commentary after commentary of the same game just on a different difficulty. Um, so anyway that's kind of like what we're doing here. Uh, now it's interesting because when I jumped into hard mode it's my initial thought was like holy smokes this is so much more than original like original more or less feels like a breeze compared to this um but i only had i think one restart uh in stage one and then this run we're watching now is my second attempt at this mode and i think i just restarted the first time because like i just took a really silly early hit um but that just taught me very quickly, okay, things are working slightly differently in this uh, in this mode. So I just need to be that much more on top of my, my game, so to speak. Um, and just really, really capitalize on the back and forth between the graze counter and the break um, as much as possible. And just be really smart, or smarter with my movements. Um, so yeah, it's... If you jump into this mode and you feel like, oh, it's just too much chaos, I, I totally get it, but you might actually surprise yourself if you just do a little more. I'm very excited to share my, my thoughts on Extreme, Standard Extreme, uh, because it was a, a similar but also different experience. Um, so I'm probably going to record that after this one and then just put it out at some point down the road or something. Um, but... This game is just fantastic, even though it it's um, being cleared quickly. Uh, it's it's a blast. It offers just a ton of replayability. It's super super engaging. I love being able to make choices uh, in the middle of the run uh, and not always feel so limited. Uh, there's just something about that which kind of yeah, it just makes the run feel more alive. If you need to do one thing. You can do it. If you have to do something else because of the situation and it's you're facing different circumstances this time around compared to the last run you attempted, boom, you can grab that one item you need or whatever. It's just, it really keeps things interesting. I, I really appreciate seeing that kind of stuff in games like this. Um, and of course, I love games that don't drag on for like 50 minutes, an hour, so... It's not that I'm super opposed to them. Like, if one really, really grips me, then I'll, I'm will i fine to just go all in. I don't care. But on average, when I think about long shmups, it's like, ugh. Like, with how particular I know I am, uh, it's not exactly the kind of duration I'm most drawn to. I'll, I'll word it that way. But with this, we're doing, like, a full run in 19 minutes. That's with the menu stuff at the very start, of course, and whatever score screens. So the actual playtime isn't so much. And it was the same with the extreme mode. It was like 19 minutes, pretty much identical. Um, so that says to me, okay, bosses are going down just as quickly. And it's just a great flow. I, uh, this game is such a blast. It, it's very, very well done. I love seeing examples of game's just so polished like this and that's what I feel this one is it just produces this experience that you like you really can't complain like it may not have every single thing you would have liked or you might have prefer preferences here and there but I know when I'm playing this it's just like I don't even care to think about any anything else it's just the gameplay the experience you get here is just fantastic so anyway uh, I will focus on <laughs> the run a little bit too, um, and I'm gonna ensure, uh, make sure that I uh, sip away at some water.
So obviously, patterns are tighter. Uh, some enemies that would have, let's say, a single stream of bullets coming your way, they now have that plus two on the side, or like one on each side, to create that kind of uh, enclosing pattern effect, where it's like, yeah, you can ta tap dodge away from the, th uh, the one that's targeting you, um, or macro, you, like, of course, you can macro and, t uh, stuff too, but the ones at the sides always lock you in to a certain distance, like, you can only go so far if you're gonna remain beside it or in it, which is a huge thing in this, because you're grazing a ton. But anyway, yeah. But like I said in the first look video, the game is ridiculously generous. Now, that being said, just because you see, like, tons of lives, that doesn't mean, like, oh, great, it's a, you can just cruise through not caring, taking as many hits as you want, because obviously that's not the case. You can take hits very, very quickly if you don't have your, your shield up and you're not smart with your resource management and you're maneuvering and just, yeah, just playing well like that hit. That was just silly that we just saw. Some of these sections trip me up kind of. I Like, I'm sure this is very simple stuff, but since I've barely been playing this game, yeah, like, it's just, yeah, one of those things. You gotta give yourself time, get used to it, and actually just look at what's happening. But most of what we're seeing here is just me kind of responding as things come. It's not like I've really uh, set any sort of um, learning into practice here, or, like, put it into... To good use. Like, that's just me kind of like, oh, okay, this is happening, I better do this now, so make a choice. Sort of deal. I love these huge enemies. I, I know I said that in the, the other video, too, but they're just massive. Man, this game is just solid stuff. And what I really, really enjoy is just how intuitive this game is. Like, very quickly you you kind of just know, okay, the big blue ships that come out, they're going to do this attack, which is a perfect opportunity to just charge before they actually do their big spray of everything. And that's when you, of course, uh, use your, your graze counter um, or your break or whatever you want to do in that situation. Some of those sprays, it's not that they're so risky, well, it's not that they're so dangerous that you, or at least that I, like I feel I have to always use my graze counter there. It's just kind of a precaution. I don't want to take unnecessary hits if I don't need to over silly things like that. To be honest, I think this is the boss that has given me the most trouble. Um, I think the first time, especially. Like, not so much now. Like, I still take silly hits here and there. That's normal. But I think the first time when I was playing Standard Original and I reached this boss for the first time, I, oh, I probably lost something like four lives just from those uh, energy waves and then sword flinging and the targeting lasers, just all that kind of stuff, because it throws a bunch of stuff your way, and you're not exactly sure on the spot the best way to deal with everything right away. I do really enjoy the sound we hear when you lose your shield. It really just, it stands out, and it's great because you just know, okay, yeah, like, I really gotta not get hit now, because I know that thing is gone, and it's gonna take a little while. i am really come to enjoy the the shield uh, every 15 seconds. Uh, as much as I like the idea of being able to use my grace counter at uh, half, halfway or whatever it was for the other thing that I 
was doing quite a bit with when I first started playing. Um, and in ways I feel that does, that would technically get more use because you're like 15 seconds, it doesn't sound like a lot, but that is, sometimes that can feel like an eternity when you just need it to come back. You're just counting on it. Um, but you know what, I've just gone with the shield because more often than not, if I have the shield and I'm playing well, it just means I can, uh, like, I'm not going to lose a life if I get hit. The shield's going to go first. And then I can deal with getting it back after the fact. So in that sense, it's kind of just like a nice background precaution for the whole run. And if you recall, uh, for those who watched the first look, I was playing with the other character with the the shots that fire straight out in front of you. Um, I switched to this character specifically for hard mode because there is just a lot more coming your way. And I want to be able to st uh, stay on top of speed killing enemies and all that kind of stuff. So just having the, the very wide spread like this is just fantastic for tap dodging to the side of from one side of the screen to the other or whatever and uh, still being able to take out enough enemies because I feel if I wasn't doing that I probably wouldn't be staying on top of the enemy count so much but this game is such a blast So since I have, well, it's not like I've done the novice mode, but I probably won't do that um, for standard anyway. But since I have pretty much everything in standard done, I'm very, very excited to jump into, what was it called? I think Unlimited with the Suicide Bullets. That'll be next, of course. And uh, yeah, as if we're at the final stage already, like holy smokes. Like, this is just a fantastic game. Like, holy smokes. You can just jump in, and less than 20 minutes later, you've either cleared the game or you have time for another one because it's so short. It's obviously not anything like uh, some of the Psycho titles that were... You're like in the run for 12 minutes and then you're you've either cleared it or not, but still 19 mins is totally fine with me. I love the way they've done some of these uh, just transitional sections during stages, like where we see the silhouette of the big ship in the air, but you don't see it like it doesn't come right away. And then boom, here it is. I love when developers take the time like, or creators, rather, like, whoever's all involved. I'm not sure how many people were in on this project, but just when they take the time to add those additional touches to the project, just to give it more life, it just feels that much more exciting. This was a pretty hectic <laughs> part for me because sometimes I'm just I'm not getting enough break back or at least it doesn't feel like I'm getting it as soon as I would like. So coming through that and having 10 lives for this uh, final stretch was yeah, just I I really wasn't sure how things were going to go. I I felt confident enough, but at the same time with how quickly you can lose lives, I, I wasn't going to assume that it was in the bag or anything like that. Not to mention some of the attacks, like I just... They just trip me up. Because I'm not used to that kind of stuff. But I just love seeing how many... stars you can get. And it's always really fascinating just to see how differently you graze. Like, 
if a game has grazing, it has grazing. Like, it's as simple as that. But the way in which the patterns move kind of dictates how you would want to adjust your approach. Like, when I'm playing Shikondo, I... I graze very differently in that game compared to this one. Here, you kind of just... You don't really have to travel with stuff. You kind of just stay beside it as it goes past you. But in Shikondo, part of what I love is the fact that you want to travel with the bullets. You want to move up the screen, get beside it, travel down the screen with it, just to get as much charge from stuff as you can. Sure, you can do that sort of thing here, and I do a little bit, but it's not like in Shikondo. It's... It's just really fascinating seeing how these, uh, how this mechanic plays out differently in different games. Now, because I knew this was a pretty simple fight, I was I was very very determined to just get through here without taking a hit, just in case I needed all eleven lives or something for the final. Ah, oh, but I took a hit there. I forgot about that one. I love the design of this thing. When you just see the big jets, well, not that we see it now because it's gone, but just the, the big jets on the back holding this thing up and just tons of projectiles. I want to check the options if we can turn off the t like little chats they have because I personally don't care at all about these characters. I'm just in it for the action. This That attack trips me up a lot. Like... I'm sure it's as simple as just picking a spot and just making tiny adjustments, but yeah, I want to play more and get more used to it and just be in the in the fight a little more, just get more exposure essentially. That big laser blast that she does, when I was playing, um, I think standard original, that tripped me up quite a bit, too. I'm not sure what causes the boss here to be invincible. Because sometimes, like, it looks as though it comes on when I'm using Break, but other times it looks like it comes on when I'm using Graze. So that says, okay, it, it's probably actually not either of those. Because it doesn't, uh... Like, there's no consistency, like in something like, um... Crimson Clover, for instance. So I'm not actually sure what's up with that. Maybe it's just on some sort of timer or something, who knows. Oh, that was nasty. And there we go. So anyway, that's that. We're not going to be watching credits or anything like that, so um, thank you so much for checking this out. I'm really excited to do the commentary for Extreme Mode next. I'm just going to pop on and do that right now. And then drop that in, I'm not sure, another week or two weeks or a month. Who knows? But anyway, thank you so much. Let me know what you think down below if you've played this game or if you want to. If you want to dig into this mode. Whatever you want to share. Have an awesome one. Thank you so much for being here. And we will see you next time.